The Fate of the Lion During his duel with Luther on Calaban, he suffered a severe psychic blow which left him mortally wounded. He was then briefly pulled into the raging warp vortex. Luther survived the contest, but proved mentally unhinged and was taken prisoner by the Dark Angels. He was then placed into a stasis cell deep within the bowels of the rock, the remains of the Order's mightiest fortress monastery and all that was left of their world, Caliban. To contemplate his crimes against the chapter's Primarch, his continued existence a secret known only to each successive Supreme Grand Master of the Dark Angels, whose cell can only be accessed through the use of the Sword of Secrets, a chapter artifact which is the mark of the Supreme Grand Master's office. L. Johnson, who had briefly spirited away into the warp during the destruction of Caliban, eventually emerged and was taken into a hidden and unreachable chamber deep within the heart of the rock by the Watchers in the Dark, and also placed into a dreamless sleep to keep him alive. This is a secret known only to the Emperor of Mankind himself who, despite his living death, still sees all upon the Golden Throne. Even the Supreme Grand Master of the Dark Angels was not privy to this last and greatest secret of the Dark Angel. Yet, some amongst them long whispered that one day, the Lion would return to lead one final crusade intended to achieve the Dark Angel's greatest victory for mankind and finally bring justice and redemption to the remaining fallen angels. None knew that this legend had more truth to it than they realized or that their lost Primarch long slept peacefully at the heart of their own fortress monastery. The Era Indomitus I will teach them to fear the darkness in which they dwell, and to dread the shadows they believe their allies. For there is no greater terror hunting the Stygian Void and the Lion of Caliban. In the era Indomitus, during the Arcs of Omen campaign, Lion L. Johnson awoke at last from his 10,000 year long sleep within the very heart of the rock. While his brother Primarch Robert Guillemin's forte lies in matters of command and administration, a task he accomplishes with a plum, Lionel Johnson was ever a warrior, a hunter and killer first and foremost, now awakened into a galaxy of darkness and insanity. He strides between the stars on a mission of vengeance. And yet, somehow, long before his return reached the ears of the wider galaxy, the Lion's legend had begun to spread from planet to planet within Imperial space. Disconnected worlds united by a mysterious figure who stalked from mist-wreathed passageways to cut down fearsome monsters like Chaff. Some knew him as the Cowled Giant, or the Unforgiving Knight, or even mistakenly as the Emperor Incarnate, and his arrival was always heralded by an apparition of ancient forests fading from the ether. The true nature of this empiric travel is known only to the Primarch himself. But as he lay slumbering beneath the rock, 
His dreams often return to the Calibanite forests of his youth. Could he have been born in his restless sleep to other worlds by the ghosts of that same arboreal realm, slain in the destruction of Caliban? He is certainly not telling, but the practical applications of this ability to appear as if from nowhere through the warp are not lost on him. And to finish things off, the Lion's War Gear, first during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. The Leonine Panoply, the Lion wore a suit of artificer armor made to his exacting specifications known as the Lion Panoply. The Lion Helm, the Lion Helm is a sacred object of the Dark Angels chapter. It has been said to have been worn by Primarch Lionel Johnson and at present takes the form of a winged Mark VII Aquila power armor helmet. The helm is carried by a watcher in the dark. Built into the helmet is a protective force field which can be activated even when the helm is not being worn. The Lion Helm is currently worn by Supreme Grand Master Azrael. The Lion Sword The Lion Sword is L. Johnson's Great Sword. The sword was broken in antiquity and lost. It is now rumored to be carried by the mysterious fallen angel Cypher who seeks to reforge it and present it to the Emperor, obtaining absolution and forgiveness for all the fallen who wish it. And the Wolf Blade. The lion sometimes chose to wield a great two-handed chainsword known as an eviscerator that he named the Wolf Blade. And now for his war gear during the 41st millennium, the era Indomitus. He wore an artificer armor and he wielded fealty. This great Primarch sized power sword crafted in the traditional style of the arming swords of the Knights of Lost Caliban, greatly enhances the lion's ability to engage in mass butchery. And the Emperor's shield. What truly marks Lionel Johnson out as a warrior of truly singular provenance isn't even his sword, but rather the Emperor's shield. This Oromite shield was once wielded by the Emperor himself, and aside from its indomitable protective powers, it reflects the force of any incoming attacks right back at the lion's foe with a sonorous boom.